Okay, I'm going to do an update of the uh, system. We got it working properly in parallel. Uh, you can see the two batteries here are uh, at 100% state of charge. Uh, we have a Victron. Uh, we're connected to this Raspberry Pi that's running Victron OS. It's connected to the smart shunt that you see over here. And then this is the data. So we are also showing 100% state of charge with it. I've cleaned up the uh, wiring in here, uh, getting ready for more devices in there for monitoring. Unfortunately, I couldn't get this to work. There's some issue. The uh, I'm connected as I was to the uh, Sunny Island inverter that was in the trailer, uh, hooked up through uh, the BMS side of it, which is right here. And this is CAN bus, but I am not getting getting even the signal is, is showing, but there's no data, so I don't know what's going on there. I've already updated to the latest uh, firmware in the Sunny Islands. I noticed that at boot, this, this one on the right is at 1.004, and the one at the left is at 1.006, or maybe it's 1.06 and 1.04. I don't know if that's the issue, but I may pull the uh, inverter that's outside that I know works and, and put it back up here so I've got a, a functioning functioning data so I could see what the SMA inverters are outputting real time. Um, <clears throat> things to finish up here is obviously button button it up. I'm probably going to do that once I get this inverter figured out so I have that uh, data acquisition working here. Second thing I have to do, I'm about an amp off on the readings between the uh, smart shunt and the uh, SMA. Uh, I have to calibrate it again and that's done by shorting shorting one of the leads across here when there's no load so I'm going to do that I can show you how it's just a little bit off actually there's no current so it's the current so low it's not going to help to show you right now but it is off by half amp to one amp and I want to get that calibrated what I noticed was that this was supposedly a 50 millivolt 500 amp shunt but to get it to match I have to set it to, to 50 millivolt and 450 on the uh, display here, and uh, then it works. It works correct. Correct. It's it's reading the same uh, current that you see from the Victron, and also from a, I have a Fluke multimeter current clamp, and they all match within about 0.3 amps once I calibrate this shunt. The reason why it's not calibrated is every time you change the capacity setting for the battery, uh, it loses the fact that you said you had a shunt. And I had to charge these independently. So I had to originally set it up where I had this set up as 300 amp hours, charge the first battery, uh, then charge the second battery all the way up to 100. And then I paralleled the two of them, and then I changed it back to 600 amp hour, and I just never got around to, uh, to getting that, uh, that fixed. Uh, I do wanna go over in this video some of the settings that I'm using on the charging, and then I'll probably show you on the computer what that looks like in terms of uh, the graphs. But the idea of charging is you've got three charge settings. You've got boost, you have uh, full, and you have equalization. So what I have is equalization is off, and uh, boost is, is uh, the main charging method. Let me, let me go in here and show you the settings. Go down to password settings so you can make changes. You add up all these numbers, that's nine plus nine, 18, 26. So you can see it says one, now you can make changes. We're gonna go to uh, meters, battery meters. So one thing to note is, you know, it's about 5% off on this uh, sunny island. And the reason is it's important to get the full charge uh, in. And that's, I think, what allows it to know where it is on the state of charge. So that's, that's what I'm doing every seven days now. And I haven't hit seven days yet, so it hasn't done a full charge. But let's look at, this is, it's in float right now. 54.2 is what I have as a float voltage. You'll notice that, uh, it says float, there's a current, temperature, uh, you, 
can see I'm in a terrible state of error, and I think it's because I've never gotten a full a full charge in on it yet. All right, so what was I going to show you? It's probably under settings, battery settings, battery property. We're using VRL with the two uh, batteries at 600 amp hours. Nominal voltage 48. Max temp, I'm saying 45. This is 40 where it comes back. Zero ohms on the wire resistance. I guess there's some fan that can be controlled maybe by a relay. I've set it 40. So now go to battery charge mode. So right now I'm setting these to charge at 50 amps. And each of them, they recommend 45 amps. So theoretically I can have 90 amps here. But uh, I don't. What I'm trying to prevent is that when it gets to the full charge level, that you're at 50 amps, and that you basically push it too far, and you have the cells, any one of these 16 cells, go go above the threshold. So by limiting it to 50 amps, that means it's 25 amps per battery, roughly, and uh, it, it's, it tends to not overshoot, causing it to overshoot the the, volt, the max voltage, which I'll show you where it's set. Right now, I'm using the boost charge time at 40 minutes and I'll show you in a graph what, what that looks like when it does that. Uh, the full charge I'm going to do one, one hour. Once it hits that, f that the requirement for the full charge, it happens every given days that's set here as well and then it'll, it'll run for one hour at that uh, constant voltage setting. Uh, equalization is set at one but it's actually off and you'll see that. Cycle time to full is every seven days it should do a full charge and according to that graph it's saying we're 6.9 days away um, that's interesting because I thought Friday was when the last time I set this but 365 days for an equalization charge so the boost is your main charge and that's set at 2.3 <clears throat> you multiply that by 24 that gives you 55.2 and that is what is that uh, the max voltage that it's going to get to on a charge same thing on the full, I've got it mimicked, so the only difference between the full and the boost is the time. The boost I've got set at 40 minutes, and the full I've got set at one hour, because that's the minimum you can use. Equalization is also set at 2.3. Float is set at 2.26, so it's slightly lower. 2.26 times 24 is the voltage it'll drop to once it goes to float. Now again, zero millivolts per degree C on temp comp compensation. That's like a lead acid thing. And then that's where I said the equalization is disabled. And that's all the settings on the charge mode. Battery protection, this is kind of the standard settings. You can see at 20% it does protection mode one, 15% it does protection mode two, and 10% it does three. This is where I need to get this set up where it's saying no, there is a shunt. It's saying none right now, but I would have to shut everything down say yes, tell it what time, and go from there. What you heard right there was the air conditioning turn on. And so you can see it's momentarily pulling from the battery to do that, but it'll probably eventually uh, change the frequency and then get more power from the uh, sunny boy over there. So you can see it's doing that. You can almost hear the whine of the fan of the sunny boy uh, solar inverter as it's giving more power from itself. So now basically the solar is picking up the load that the AC introduced to the system. Yep, now it's overshooting, doing a little bit of charging. And that's all by frequency shifting. Okay, back to this. That's the last setting here. So those are the main charge settings. Uh, I'll add to this video kind of what that charge cycle looks like on the screen using uh, Victron, the data coming from the Victron as the data collection method. Okay, thanks guys. Guys, I was, wish I was doing screen capture software, but for quickness, I'm gonna just show you from the software here. What you can see is uh, 
this is the data of the charging. You can see that um, this is overnight, so this is 6 a.m. down here, so you're, you're just, I had all the loads off because we had a bad day, so it was really just holding its state of charge. Sun comes up, it starts charging the, uh, the battery, uh, full bore, then it gets to a point where the sun's more powerful than the state of charge, that 50 amps that I had set, so that it kind of drops down. Voltage went up. I don't know. Oh, what happened right here, I think, is we started applying some loads to the building. So you got a slight drop off there at around 8:30. Loads came on. Then uh, continue to charge at a constant current. You know, that's the way the SMA is set up. It uh, in boost mode. It's really doing the constant current, which is the current setting. That was at 50 amps that I showed you. And it goes all the way till it gets to that uh, boost voltage setting, which is right around 55.2. And you can see it overshot just a little bit. You can see 55.42. And then it starts going into a constant uh, voltage mode, which is really just uh, to drop. To, the current starts rapidly decreasing, but really doesn't hold a constant voltage because that. Uh, that boost time that I showed you of 40 minutes, I don't think it starts when it actually hits the peak voltage. I think it started somewhere on this up curve, and I, I don't know where, right? But it, it, it was not, to me, it's not that it, it starts it when it hit 55.2, and then you get 40 minutes from there. I think it started somewhere up on this curve, and it just stopped. And then once it hit that, it went into the float. And so you can see the voltage now came down to this float voltage of it's roughly 54.2 volts, and what do we say? It's uh, 2.26 times 24, yeah, 54.24, and that's what you're seeing. That's what you're seeing here, and uh, that's that's the gist of it. But you can see quickly that it hits the peak, and then it rapidly drops off in the both in the current and the voltage. So that that way you don't really uh, get any one cell to go crazy and over over overcharge and then you can just see our state of charge down here you know we went from the 74 percent all the way up to 100 percent and then this shows you how many amp hours have been consumed from the battery so of the 600 amp hours it it's only used 0.5 so it's full right so 99.9 percent .9 full so this is very useful this data this is all telling me what's going on with the battery and uh, I like I like using this Victron. This is the VRM portal. Okay, guys. So I hope this helps. Uh, uh, so in summary, I'm using 2.3 volts for boost and equalization. I'm using 40 minutes for the time for boost. I'm using one hour for the time for full. Uh, I think I said equalization, but I mean I'm using the only two of the three charge modes. I'm using boost and full. Equalization has settings, but it's off, it's disabled. So for boost, I'm using 2.3 volts per cell. For duration, I'm using 40 minutes. For full, I'm using 2.3 volts per cell. For uh, duration, I'm using one hour. And then for uh, uh, float, I'm using 2.26 volts per cell. And then for charge voltage, I'm using 50 amps at this point. I may, I may increase it if I want, but I think it's pretty well balanced that I can get this battery charged easily uh, by noon. So I don't really think I need to crank more amps into the battery. Uh, and that's that's what I'm doing here. And uh, I was able to successfully get the things to uh, go in parallel. It just took took a little bit of time that they... Uh, I had to go through a sequence, and I'm not sure if this is what you guys might see if you have two of these, but by turning on the slave, it, it was able to pull them both on. It was enough uh, enough surge voltage, probably powering up its caps that, that turned them both on. And then I turned on the master, and then I made sure that when the system came on, when the AC came on from the both of them, that I had some load, some building load. I had lights on that it immediately kept it kept it under load. And then that started started them working in parallel, and they've been in parallel ever since. All right, I hope this helps. Uh, I'm gonna continue to do videos on this. Uh, let me show you something though about like this week.
So you can see that we've got, uh, you know, state of charge of the battery up and down. I could say this month, which will be a little bit different. So I mean, it's very useful. I, I think if you have a chance to build one of these uh, Raspberry Pis with the uh, and using the Victron shunt, it's it's a very useful tool. And you can see the uh, the battery power. So that's all charging. Anything below the dash line is discharging. Okay, I'll keep you updated on what we learn. Uh, be well. Thanks.